two new series based on Iron Man characters, Tom Hanks in a live-action Pinocchio, and a Buzz Lightyear origin story. To infinity and beyond! But while Thursday's announcements revealed a jam-packed Disney Plus slate, there will still be plenty to catch on the big screen. Following last week's controversial decision by Warner Brothers to release all of its upcoming movies on streaming the same day as theaters, this world is not yet ready for all that you will do. Disney is committing to releasing their long-awaited blockbusters on the big screen. I'm done running. Black Widow and Eternal both still set to debut in theaters next year. You got a plan or shall I just stay duck and cover? Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins will become the first woman filmmaker for a Star Wars film. Rogue Squadron, expected to hit theaters Christmas of 2023, dedicating her first foray into the Rebel Alliance to her late father, a fighter pilot. Now I found a movie about two things I love, so I'm going to see you very soon. Marvel also revealing that when Black Panther returns to the big screen, producers won't recast the late Chadwick Boseman's role. His portrayal of T'Challa the Black Panther is iconic. It transcends any iteration of the character in any other medium from Marvel's past. And it's for that reason that we will not recast the character. Instead, the sequel will focus on other characters from Wakanda, now missing its king. I am not the king of all the people. I am king of Wakanda. Hey, what's going on? With Steve Buchanan, I'm Adam Kaufman. We're here from DraftKings taking a look at some of the betting angles for the upcoming week in the NFL. And, of course, Steve, we are zeroed in on what is suddenly a very entertaining NFC East. You got the Giants just barely holding on to first place. Washington continues to win this weekend. You got the Giants hosting the Cardinals, two-and-a-half-point underdogs. And, of course, the Eagles are hosting the Saints. They are six-and-a-half-point dogs. If you had to pick one to cover, who is it? This one's not even close to me. I will take the underdog Giants almost every single time. Against the spread as underdogs, they are 8-2 and two against the spread. They are just excelling in that realm. And look, the Cardinals oh. are a team that you can throw against, and they can get pressure on Kyler Murray. We saw the Giants do that so incredibly well last week against oh, Russell Wilson okay. and the Seahawks. If they put that same game plan into place here against the Cardinals, I think they can cover in this game. I think this is just an underrated Giants team. That defensive line has been showing up. It's been doing its job. It's getting the pressure on the quarterback, and that has been so huge for them. And then let's see what we can get from this offense. It didn't look that bad with Colt McCoy either. So I think there's a lot to like about this Giants team, especially this week to cover that spread. So they're my pick for this one. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Do it right now. New customers get a deposit bonus up to $1,000. Don't wait. This exclusive offer ends soon. Download the app. Use promo code GAME when you sign up. 10 and 10, sponsored by Lomax and Airbase. Carpet and Telmark Boring Super Centers. That was the murderer. Rolling out all over the country, and we now know when and where Jersey's first COVID vaccines will be administered. Plus, a crash in the city's Kensington neighborhood turns fatal. What police say caused the accident. And we will have the very latest on that drama in the bird's nest. Jalen Hurts gets his first start today as quarterback of the Eagles. First, meteorologist David Murphy starts us off with a look at the Sunday forecast. David, a beautiful finish to our weekend. Absolutely gorgeous out here right now. Just a little bit of a breeze every now and then, although I am kind of standing in a windbreak. We've got sun and some high clouds beginning to filter in. And right now, we're in the low 60s and pretty much... Like right where you're gonna be for your high temperature. So you're okay, go and I want right to be everyone, not just the 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 it's gonna start to get a little detective's cool actually very, the very hard. So there are some clouds for you. Then you should find the murderer. I think it's gonna be pretty nice. Always a dead end. Maybe a sweatshirt under it, and you're ready to roll. 62 right now in Philadelphia, 64 in Wilmington, 62 in Millville. A little cooler up north. Allentown's still at 51, and Reading at 54 degrees. And as we go through the rest of the day, you can see how those numbers will tumble. We'll probably go from the low six. He's pretty quickly down to 52 by 6 o'clock, and then on down from there as cooler air marches in. And as that cool air sets up for tomorrow, we do have an issue with some rain and perhaps a little wet snow. This could come in as soon as the uh, tail end of the rush hour, maybe even the middle of the rush hour. And then you can see how we go into the afternoon, and there is that snow extending up into the Lehigh Valley. It doesn't look like it's going to be a lot, though. Light, wet snow, mostly on the grass. 
just take it easy when that is rolling around. And then the second system comes across the country over the next several days. And on Wednesday, late morning, early afternoon, there. watch what happens. We start to see a coastal low form. It interacts with that energy coming in from the west, and it does look like a good portion of the region is going to start out with some snow early on, and then maybe a change over to rain south and east as we go through. You're in there. Wednesday could feature some pretty heavy snow, though, in the afternoon, and at night we'll cover the latest from Mackie Weather coming up. Nydia? David, thank you. The first vaccines in the U.S. have now left the Pfizer facility and are on their way to all 50 states. Two main trucks left this morning. An additional truck will come in later to pick up boxes and take them to the U.S. territories. On Monday, Pfizer... This idiot is so dumb. This guy is so dumb. ...as well as an order for a slightly fewer number of boxes on Tuesday. So many people coast to coast are saying prayers or crossing See, their fingers that's hoping this vaccine mm -hmm. could start to slow down the heartbreaking toll this pandemic has taken on America. A bit earlier today, New Jersey Governor Bill Murphy appeared on ABC's This Week discussing the state's vaccine plan. He says the first COVID vaccines will be administered Tuesday morning at University Hospital in Newark. Although the vaccine does show some light at the end of the tunnel, the governor pleading with the public to continue to practice social distancing. This number of weeks are going to be hell, I, I fear. So we're begging with people to please, please, please don't let your guard down, even when you're in private settings. Governor Murphy says the majority of New Jersey's first batch of vaccines will be administered to health care workers. Hospitals are preparing to receive their shipments of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Why? I didn't even get to use my amazing thing. This is nearly as quickly as they get them. ABC's mm -hmm. Kaylee Hartung joins us from Houston with more. Hope is on the more horizon food. for this Texas hospital. This is like the bright light at the end of that long, dark tunnel. Is that? Memorial Hermit, the largest health system in Houston, has treated more than 12,000 COVID patients to date. Now they're preparing its ultra-cold freezers for the precious COVID-19 vaccine, even practicing the delivery process. Their first delivery of 16,500 doses expected as soon as Monday. We want to use our... Um, that person didn't really care. ...to make sure that we've got it right, so when we start administering it to the general public, we do it well. At Houston Methodist, ICU nursing director Teal Riley mm -hmm. will be among the first healthcare workers to receive the vaccine. We first met Riley in June in this emotional interview with Tom Yamas. When they don't survive, you know, knowing that we did everything we possibly could to restore their... Um... No. Okay, you're going to make me cry now. <laughs> I have a hard time talking. This is the hardest part. <gasps> I'm sorry. Six months later, she says her job hasn't gotten easier. But now the one is not turning the corner. It's like a relief because uh, over and over, you know, you're waiting and patiently, you know, for something, some kind of change. Riley says it's taken some convincing for her to be comfortable getting the shot. With a little research, she says the decision was easy. We work in a critical care area. We are in, in the thick of all of this. Knowing that we can get this vaccine uh, well, is kind of like an outlet for us. I think overall uh, it gives no. us what we did. So after more than nine months of suffering, relief is on the way. We're at Texas Medical Center. It's the largest medical center in the world. Among the 27 hospitals here, they'll be receiving more than 30,000 doses of the vaccine, and that first shipment could come within the next 24 hours. Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Houston. We know many of you still have a lot of questions about the vaccine, so we're inviting you to tune in to our Building It Better Together Town Hall. COVID vaccine, fact versus fear. Health reporter and registered nurse Allie Gorman is your host. Join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. You can see the town hall on all of our 6 ABC streaming app and on 6 ABC. Yeah, no. New COVID-19 restrictions will go into effect in Delaware. That's going to happen tomorrow. The governor, John Carney, mandating mm -hmm. restaurants and bars close at 10 p.m. All businesses, including retail shops and restaurants, are limited to 30% capacity. Houses of worship are limited to 40% capacity. Exercise classes at gym now limited to 10 people, and machines must be spaced 10 feet apart. And developing in Newcastle County, Delaware, one person is dead and another is badly hurt after a double shooting in Middletown. It happened in the 300 block of Jefferson Street at around 4 this morning. Medics pronounced one person dead at the scene and rushed a second person to the hospital. At this point, the condition of the second victim is not known. Police have not released a motive or announced any arrests. 
Philadelphia police are investigating another double shooting, this one in North Philadelphia. Shots were fired in the 3700 block of North Marshall Street at around 3 this morning. A man in his 20s was shot at least four times in his stomach. He is in critical condition right now. Another man was shot once in the leg. He is listed as stable. So far, no arrests have been made. And one driver is dead after an overnight crash in the city's Kensington neighborhood. And police tell us that driver lost control of an SUV. Officers say the driver went off the road just before 3 o'clock this morning yeah, and crashed into a fence in, eventually into a and then, yeah. along Chip Street. Medics pronounced that driver dead there at the scene. Police are still investigating the crash. Chosen 300 Ministries in Center City reopened today following a COVID-19 outbreak in its building. Representatives say all staff members have tested negative since the outbreak and the virus has been contained. Chosen 300 closed back on December 4th after four staff members tested positive. The ministry's building and vehicles have been thoroughly cleaned.